we are back and we know that you're still there. Yeah. Remember, our conversation today is centered on digital age success. And we've broken that down into three concise segments. First, the age of technology, social media success, and tech wealth. Well, these are terms and terminologies <laughs> that are here with us to stay today. Our first guest, Mr. Bayo Adio, he joins the conversation in a moment. I will take us through the age of technology. Yes, but before he takes his seat, and um, because of technology, he's not sitting right here in the studio with us. We're having a great conversation this morning with our first guest, all the way from the United States through Zoom. Let's take a very quick break. Remember, this is Today with John and Helen on Plus TV Africa. Yeah, Helen, I'm so excited today. You know, today we're going to, the topic is about digital wealth, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. And uh, our first guest is not here live with us in the studio. Mm -hmm. I remember you said earlier on that if it was 20 years ago, this it would have been... been it would have been a different uh, scenario yes, altogether. Yes, yes. So now you can actually sit in your living room and Anywhere. have a whole TV station run. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. The 21st century and all its magic. Yes, yes. 21st century. Uh, well, to unpack this age for us, like we said earlier, is Mr. Bayo Adio. A Nigerian American entrepreneur. We've come across that word a lot, mm -hmm. so many yeah. times. And uh, he's also an investor who is passionate about empowering others through coaching, community building, leadership, and fitness. Mr. Adio is founder at GeoFit, a bootcamp style gym completely run online, and founder also of Fit Biz Techie a digital marketing and virtual tech support agency. Well, our guest, Mr. Dio, who has worked as a software developer after obtaining a bachelor's degree in management information systems. Please welcome Mr. Bayo Adio, whose life mantra is rise and let your light shine. Mm. Such a pleasure to have you on the show today, Mr. Dio. Good morning, Mr. It's Adio. It's an absolute pleasure. Great. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. This is uh, exciting. We're this, so excited this, to have you join the show. This is indeed science because all the way in the U.S., right, we're seeing you almost touching you. When he should be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're welcome to the show, Mr. Adia, once again. Now tell us. Thank you. How did we get to this point, you know, with the evolution of uh, technology. technology? It's moved so fast, like we said, uh, especially in the last 20 to 30 years. Yeah. How did we get here? Yeah, I think there's a few things that has changed. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, new inventions in terms of how fast we can transmit information, but also the capacity of the information that we can process at once. So automatically that allows us to communicate more effectively. And that also allows us to automate a lot of things that we would have had to do manually before. So eventually, slow by slow, I think they used to call the, the era that we were at before, like the industrial revolution, where things were more like the industry was much more heavier on manual labor. But now with like, faster speed, more capacity of the internet, things are becoming more automated and more automated. And the focus has shifted now more to like um, what we call now the new information age, which drives towards more like technology um, and how quick you can access information to be able to do the things that you want to do. So I think that is slowly how we got here today. And um, and we can tell even more recently in the last year, people are really, really leveraging uh, the power of information and technology to even create more of a global uh, world as we speak now. Excellent. Um, so much has changed, and I dare say we have only just begun. Now, what, in your opinion, is likely to be the fate of those 
who are still lagging behind. I'm laughing, John, you know now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not talking about you. <laughs> Woo, not today. We are not talking about you today. <laughs> Please answer our question, my guess. You didn't hear John say that. <laughs> You know, I have seen this happen over and over again. I think people must adapt, uh, regardless of how behind you are. I think this is definitely where the world, it's not actually where the world is heading. I think that's where the world is at now. In order to be competitive, um, you definitely have to adapt and continue to adapt to new technology. I will say this, though. I think we're slowly evolving a little bit beyond like information age now to more like um, experience age. So you would sometimes hear things that about like artificial intelligence. So I think eventually, hopefully, the people that are more experienced, that are more knowledgeable, that have more expertise in a specific subject, um, the focus is going to go towards them translating that information and experience that they have in a more technological platform to where they can share with others. Um, so I think it's extremely important nowadays to um, definitely adapt to technology in any field that you're in. Uh, we're seeing this play out in the medical field, um, even in traditional fields that you would not think will um, rely on technology, like teachers teaching students online, that's traditionally being in the classrooms. Um, we even have consultations with doctors and nurses now, virtually. Um, and me, I'm in a fitness space predominantly. And this is something that I never thought would happen, like, because you have to physically be there to train someone. But now, a lot of clients also prefer to train with their personal trainers virtually nowadays. Um, you can order, if you own a restaurant, for example, you're missing a huge share of the market. Matter of fact, I don't think you'd be able to be competitive if you don't offer some sort of e-commerce for people to be able to order delivery, food delivery to come to your house, especially in a place like Lagos that has a high traffic. Um, so I think now and nowadays, technology is important. And also customers' demands are higher. Like, we, like if we have a plumbing problem in our house, we we don't want to have to call or look for a directory. We just want to get on our phone and Google plumbers near me. Mm. And whoever shows up in there is what people are going to gravitate towards. They're going to look at the reviews. They're going to make a decision instantly on who to go for. So whether you're a cleaner, a plumber, a doctor, a chiropractor, whatever you are, just know that people are looking for you online. So if wow. you don't adapt the younger people, or I would say more technologically advanced people, <laughs> oh, stop, are going to run you out of business because stop, they're going to dominate. Stop, <laughs> hate, stop hating at Helen. Helen, now, there's, <laughs> no, there's, no, hiding, there's no hiding place for you now, Helen. You the have message no is, evidence. The message is very clear. You have to adapt, okay? I'm adapting. Now, uh, <laughs> Mr. Dio, every aspect of our lives is hooked on this new trend and i must confess to you that it's it's really so it's so scary there you go now what are the real benefits of technology especially in an environment where some basic amenities needed for for our basic livelihood are still conspicuously absent well i'm not talking about the us now mm. i'm bringing it back home yeah i think if we're talking about like developing countries, upcoming countries in different parts of the world and regions like Africa. I don't know if, I think technology can help with the economic growth of the company, of the, of the country. So that means if we leverage technology, that means the workforce does not have to rely on the local economy. Now we can have people actually acquiring jobs worldwide. So like I have a few staff in Nigeria that work with me, they don't earn their income from Nigeria. So that means we can leverage technology to bring in as much revenue as possible to the country by people looking for jobs externally. But also, typically people have had to travel to acquire education and information. So what I'm seeing now when I meet some of these people in Nigeria uh, with a high amount of knowledge, um, it's because now they're going through courses online to be able to help them learn more about the world, learn more about their 
um, their niche and their topic. And I think the more, so that also prevents people leaving in order to acquire information to be able to um, aspire for growth or become better. So I think those are the benefits that I think technology can have um, in a place like Nigeria is being able to bring in jobs, but also being able to learn on how we can improve our environment uh, by having access to information. Now, I will say this though, I think certain expertise are still needed. So the reason why is that even though technology exists, um, there's still somebody that has to manage that technology. So I don't think that's ever gonna go away. Um, so people need to be aware that even though technology is a tool, but it does not replace like things like human emotion, the know-how. Technology is just supposed to help you leverage what you already know how to do. So I think if people think of it that way, to not like be solely technology focused, to think of like technology is just helping me do what I do better, um, then I think it's not as scary at that point. So I think you also have to have, I would say more like a, a little bit of a, a, a backup plan with everything that you do. So just in case you have a technology disruption, you have enough backup to be able to still kind of continue to exist and survive in whatever environment that you're in. So I think it's still important to know how to do things manually, um, but then just using technology to scale or do it better. Okay. Remember, our thrust this morning on the show is um, digital success. Yeah. And along the line, wealth creation will come. And so we know many are making lots of money online today. And that's perhaps one of the attractions to the new tech culture. Now, what does one look out for to be able to plug into the life of online wealth and success? I would say that, first of all, you have to think of a problem that you want to solve. So I think that's where it starts. Um, so I think once you think of a problem that you want to solve, then you can now think of who is your audience and who are the people looking to solve this problem. So this is where I think the online space kind of helps. So for example, um, some people are, maybe you study to be like a, a marriage therapist. Like you want to help people like uh, become better in their relationships or things like that. So now you can actually have a platform like Instagram or YouTube or anywhere or LinkedIn where you have your profile, where you put out articles, where you discuss videos. And by doing that, you're going to connect with some people's pain or what they're trying to solve. You're going to connect with people deeper and then people will reach out to you uh, for services that way. And this is how I've seen plenty of people become very, very successful in this technology age. Um, I've seen companies in Nigeria get bought out recently by um, all these other international companies. Like I'm very fascinated with companies like Paystack, who just got bought recently for like almost $200 million. Um, and there's many, many companies like that. And when I even come home, I'm very fascinated to see um, these apps of people really thinking of solutions they can solve locally and developing applications to solve those problems locally. So I think um, these are the things that are making people highly successful because before you had to rely on connections or people to like get a foot in an industry or, or be able to accomplish something. But now you actually don't have to anymore. You can literally put yourself out there, talk about your experience, talk about your knowledge and the whole world literally can see you. You have a the ability to actually put yourself out there and your skills out there to be approached by any potential client or customer great. to be able to be successful. Great, great, great. So great. many great. questions. So <laughs> yes. many questions. Great, uh, Mr. Adio. At least now we know that the bus has moved mm. and it will do well for all of us, not just Helen, to jump on board and do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> and do something about Miss it. Miss Helen is already on board. We're doing this <laughs> Helen is on there board. I, okay, Helen. Thank you someone has, someone, God bless someone you. Someone has your back. For rescuing me. <laughs> so th thank you so much, Mr. Adio, for un very unraveling, unraveling a lot of this. Because uh, I'll tell you that for some of us, it's been, you know, we, it's been a bit worrisome. Mm. But now we see hope. 
yeah. in what you have uh, talked about. Mm. Thanks so much. And we're all wrapped in it. We're all wrapped in it, and especially with people like mm. you out there. And this is um, totally what you do with your profession. We're excited to have had you on the show, and we thank you for your time. We are thank about to, to release you to go back to, go to back sleep. To bed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Up now, off to work. Okay. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you very much. All right. Time to take a break? Yes. Because we have another guest who is waiting yeah. to take us to the next segment. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs>